intro. Yo, what up? This is Algie Smith right here. Yo, what up? It's John L.E. J. Blaze. Right now, y'all are watching Not All Talk. Not Ooh, All Talk. Beautiful. Jennifer. <laughs> Pasima. Everyone, welcome to Not All Talks. I am so excited because today I get to interview some of the two most amazing people that I know. I have definitely been able to watch these two du duos just do amazing thing in the entertainment realm, but I got to see it in the beginning. So I want to invite you in hearing their story from when they started to where they are now. Welcome, John and Algie hey, to Not hey, All hey, Talk. Hey, hey, <laughs> Yeah, so I'm so excited that you guys are here from L.A. Mm -hmm. and you're just in Atlanta and you had the opportunity to sit and talk to me about your experience and how you got from point A to point B to point C to point D. So mm -hmm. I just really want to know where it all started. Where did your gift and passion for music and entertainment come from? And where did your gift come from? Because not a lot of people know. You're behind the scenes doing a lot of great things. Yeah. Um, first of all, thank you for having us on Not All Talk. Of course. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, my, my passion for music, I think it started when I was way younger. My mom used to tell me that I used to beat on like pens, pots and pans when I was like, a little kid. <laughs> um, when I was like one. But I think it started then. It really didn't hit me until I was about nine years old, nine or ten years old, which was the first time that he put me in the studio. Okay. So that's when I recorded my first song, and that's when I knew what I wanted to do. Um, I didn't know it in a whole yet. I didn't know that I wanted to be acting as well, but I knew that entertainment was something that I wanted to do, specifically music at the time. So he put you in the studio yeah. and was like, yeah. what, when, when you put him in the studio, what was your idea? What What did you want to see? You just wanted to see what he would do? We, uh, just, we just tried it out, honestly. We didn't really have an agenda. It was more of a, you know. A passion. I don't even know who was a passion at that point. Like to be honest, it was like you know he had came to me and he he had uh, recorded a song um, with his you know some cousins and stuff and, <laughs> and he was like yeah I was like you want to do this for real? He was like yeah I was like well let's see what happens you know yeah. and we didn't really have like a true like um, alternative in regards to like all right you were gonna make you famous and this is the thing it was just like you know it was, I love music and he he has a, a, a love and passion for music and so we just two music heads that just kind of found a, a space where we could be creative. And come together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I've, yeah. I've like, you know, just the, my knowledge of music now is just so, you know, it's just so, it, it's so much more than what I ever thought it would be. I started yeah. off rapping, I just started off singing, but like, ever since I've been yeah, coached, I mean, I've mm -hmm. just been, it's like the floodgates been open. Like, it's funny because I used to go in the studio and sometimes I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear what I wanted to sing. I knew I would want to sing something. I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear certain notes. You know what I'm saying? Like I couldn't. Know, I didn't know where to go. He knows. <laughs> I just be in there struggling. Like I don't hear it. But now it's like being pushed to do different things, like learning piano, knowing my scales, it's simple stuff that you're supposed yeah. to do as a musician. But um, take not just being a singer or a rapper, but taking an extra mile to know more Everything. stuff. Yeah, yeah. But now like. Just now I know it's a lot more stuff. Mm -hmm. Did that come before or after No Edition? Like, um, it was before and after. Okay. Because w with No Edition, I got to work with Babyface and Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, so, so that I've definitely helped that a just, lot. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> just working with Babyface yeah. alone. Mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah, so John, behind the scenes, like I hear a lot of things that you do behind the scenes, but can you let our audience know what you do behind the scenes? But yeah, I'll be cooking. <laughs> no, no, literally, literally behind the scenes, I, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't think what I do is, is like a, like a lot, obviously. But I mean, obviously, looking outside, looking in, it's, yeah, it is a lot. You know, it is. Um, it's amazing. I mean, I guess I can just speak on like you know my experience with him. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just really just teaching him everything I, I learned and you okay. know and just kind of like you know learning stuff to you know as far as music and stuff in regards to like how to be better you know watching as I'm teaching and stuff like that um but I mean we shot videos we did I did I did graphics I've done yeah, you've done it all, all kind of stuff you know produced. I mean produced and, <laughs> like, and you know I mean but it all came from 
you know, um, a, a place of, of something that we needed. Yeah. And then, you know, there was always, for me, it was always a level of like, a certain level of like excellence I wanted to have. Of course. I wanted always perception to be higher than what mm -hmm. budget was, you know, yeah. so to speak. So, um, you know, I took the time out to like, you know, like really familiarize myself with different things. You know, I think we used to, we shot our first video. I had this video camera was like <laughs> this big. And we started this thing called Music Mondays, you know, which is now everybody does it. But, you know, and we, every Monday we would go out and shoot like a viral video a for, video uh, for like one, one minute video. Um, but we shoot it all pretty much all day, you yeah. know, um, just for, you know, to put on YouTube. YouTube. You know? Yeah. yeah. But that moment, just to like kind of elaborate on that, like mm -hmm. back then when we were shooting our first videos, I'll never forget, I was mad. I was so mad. <laughs> I was seeing so many other good videos, mm -hmm. and I was like, I just want my videos to look, to like, look like that. Right. I'll never forget, my mom was telling me, you have to be, you feel me? It says in the Bible, of course, but you got to be faithful with, just, with the what small. What you have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that right there planted the seed in me to always know that. Like he was saying, all right, we got it. We got this, but we're going to make it look like this. Right. Yeah. You know? How did his work ethic teach you as a man, dang, like, I have to really go out here and get it. I really have to, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, I feel like being in the studio was a major part of it, definitely. Uh, when you push to do, like, so, okay, so let me say, when I was first started singing, I couldn't sing, right? Okay, so really? when I would have, I mean, I can sing a little bit, but not as good. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but just doing a take over and over and over and over until it's perfection, you feel what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, you have to do it, do it over. We'd be sitting there for 30 minutes on one take, like do the take over again. But that, you know, learning different things in the studio helped me in life. So learning that, now when I go into audition, I know I'm going to eat it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just different things that, I, mm -hmm. that I've just grown accustomed to from that mindset. So like, when I go out, I know, all right, I got to work hard for this. Or, you know what I'm saying? Seeing... Just seeing my dad juggle jobs as well at doing music production. Yeah. It's like different things as you see as a child makes you realize how you can hustle or even just faith that you're taught. You know, it makes me leap out on certain things that I was taught and my faith is part of the hustle too, so. Yes, that's very true. Yeah. I agree. So I have another question. With this generation and with everything that we have at our fingertips, especially with the platforms of social media and everything, what would you, how would you encourage someone to just go after their dreams or go after their gifts and not give up? I mean, I say don't wait, yeah. you know. Um, if you got videos, you got music, throw it out there. Yeah. There's no rules to, you know, music and being able to share it, you know, share it as much as possible, you know. Um, that's all I can say, you know, with that, with everything that's in you, if you got an idea and you feel like singing, you don't have full music production or anything like that, it don't sound all amazing. But you have a great gift, a great voice, or just a, whatever talent you have, share it. If you, you know, sit down to write, uh, you're writing a book, and you sit down, and let's say you write five minutes a day. Yeah. That seed is planted. Now, you can either go the extra mile and take it an hour a day. Yeah. depends on how hungry you are. Mm -hmm. and so I feel like there has to be a passion for it, first of all, and whatever you want to do, speaking to the millennials of this generation, or whatever you want to call it. There has to be passion, know what you want to do. Even if you don't know what you want to do, figure it out. Um, sacrifice, of course, sacrificing time, sacrificing money, sacrificing friends, the club, you know, <laughs> all that, everything is real. Like yeah, sacrifice, that's true. and then um, diligence and faithfulness. Mm -hmm. and also, those are the four that I, you know, I would say. So how was it, even for both of you guys working and doing New Edition, how was that for you? Uh oh. I mean, it was just kind of surreal because I I toured with the with, with the uh, I guess the counterpart of the group, which was all three lead singers, which mm -hmm. is Johnny, uh, Bobby, and uh, Ralph. Mm -hmm. And so they had a group called Heads of State, and I did that for about a year and a half, and it was cool, you know, going out and seeing them and stuff like that. And then, you know, I don't know, years later, you know, what I'm saying circle back, you know, he's filming, you know, an actual biopic of the actual group so <laughs> I think it was like you know surreal and then on set was kind of like, crazy because really yeah. you know seeing <laughs> like cool. the, seeing the fellas and they like yo I'm like yeah it's my son they like tripping you know what I'm saying <laughs> so I think it was a, a newfound respect not only um, for him because of the music era you know what I'm saying but it was newfound respect for, for you know for, for me looking at like the way that was already paid in relationships that I had mm -hmm. you know had counted had, was able to establish but With then them. like um 
just seeing him, you know, do well in the role was like very achievement. Yeah, you he know, did. Like he did. He did your thing. It. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Uh, it was at Hot first work. it was very nerve wracking. Oh wow! I'm not gonna lie. My faith was there because to be just real with you, I had I had a vision board before I left Atlanta. I left Atlanta oh, December so 2015. Okay. And on my vision board, I had how much I wanted to make on my first major film. I had like, you know, just different things on there that I wanted to see. So I was saying it every day. And one day, um, I just felt like in my spirit that I should just book a flight to LA. I ain't had no bread, like, you feel me, nowhere to stay. Went out there, um, linked up with a with a, home, a homie of mine, got to stay over there and got to lay my head. So everything was taken care of. but. Still, my, like my faith was there, so everything that I had to put on my vision board came to pass, pretty mm-hmm. much to say. So that part wasn't really the, the nerve-breaking part. It was the, the fact of like getting these performances down mm-hmm. <laughs> and being this guy that's still alive, you feel yeah. what I mean, to see me do his work. Right. So that, that's, that's harder. You know, other yeah. than that part. But it was a cheat sheet at the same time because I had him there to let me know what I was doing wrong. Wrong and right. And right. That's true. And so uh, the whole process for me was just a growing process. Um, I know it's kind of probably kind of crazy like, being on set, like seeing you know, like, oh, okay. just the full circle. The full circle moment was crazy for everybody, yeah. but it was mm-hmm. a God moment for everybody on set. Like Ronnie, divine things were happening for him in his life, like from the movie. Ricky, you getting breakthroughs. He had just he had just like broke through that before the movie. Like wow. you feel me, not long before the movie. So it's like God was just doing a lot of things mm-hmm. that with that project. And I wanna double back to what you said how important is it to speak what you want into reality i remember talking to you before and he was just like i spoke it i yeah. said it daily it was a daily confession and your faith will take you where you need to go yeah it's very important it's crazy one thing that i do every morning or i try to do it every morning on my instagram my social medias is Favorite. just speak favor peace and blessings <laughs> over my followers but I try to embed it in their brain that this really works. So if you speak this over your day, that you're gonna see a change. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? But starting with that, will let them know, okay, well, if I'm depressed and I can say that I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just simple things. But I feel like if you have so many followers and so much influence, there has to be something that's being said that's, you know, mm-hmm. positive. If it's not, it's, there's two sides fighting each other. Yeah, you know? that's so, true, that's true. Yeah, fav- favor. Favorite peace and blessings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's it's been it's been an awesome opportunity interviewing you guys. I just want you guys to just encourage our audiences and just basically tell them like it's not going to be easy, but you got to yeah. get up and you got to do it every day. Every day. It's going to be so easy. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, this is something that sounds very cliche that everybody always says: the hard work. It's not going to be easy. Um, but I feel like there are ways to make it easy. Not easy, but easier. Um, faith is definitely a way. Like I said, speaking over your days is definitely a way that'll keep you from getting so discouraged when you don't see your dreams come to pass so quick. You go back to right to your confessions, I will be this, you know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> it's just your passion. Whatever you love, like he said, you're not, you gotta love it even when you don't get paid to do it. Yeah. So if you love it, and you already just have a passion for it, then it's gonna, you're gonna love the process of it, even the growing pains about it. So just stay hungry, stay faithful, stay um, encouraged, and uh, go get the bread. Mm-hmm. <laughs> get the bread. <laughs> um, I say, um, just from on the flip side of it, um, you gotta love what you do. You gotta like, you know, you, you have to miss it, you know, and that's how you know you love it. When you're away from it long enough that you miss it and it's like a void in your life. It's like a it's like your relationship, you know. I mean, some of y'all might not have relationships right now, but I'm just saying, um, you know, you gotta miss it and and <laughs> and, and you gotta have fun. Um yeah. that was my next thought. You have to have fun. And <laughs> shut up, dude. <laughs> We have fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would say for the most part that, um, um, but no, you have, to, you, have to, you have to really be hungry for it. I don't care if it's art. If it's art, I mean, you can be the next Picasso. You can, you can be the one that, to create the next masterpiece or the next Mona Lisa. You know, have a vision. And, and I, my, my thing is dream with your eyes open, you know. Um, you know, when you dream, just see yourself in the dream see things that are in your dream so if you ever dream about living in california envision the area that you live in as california and see it that way so that when you get Mm. to california you already 
know how to how to vibe. I mean, it sounds crazy, but that's what I did. Um, and then um, and stay around positive people and and link yourself with people that are able to pull the best and the goals out of you. You know, like if you're into like acting and stuff like that, find somebody that's an actor and just become uh, a leech in, in so many words of like their gift and make sure it's somebody that's stronger than you too. That's very important. Iron mm-hmm. sharpens iron. What now? Like after just doing the new edition, what do you have up your sleeves now? And you as a producer? I'm going to go on retirement for about <laughs> 10 years. No, I'm playing. Um, I mean, after new edition, I mean, he's got another film, Catherine Biglow comes out in August 4th. Uh, it's about the 1967 Detroit riots. He's going to speak on it. But, um, Make but sure y'all go see it. <clears throat> definitely go support it. it. You're yeah. you going to want to see it, trust me, when you see the trailers when they come out. Um, now, I mean, it's, it's it doesn't stop. It's just on to the next level. I mean, our purpose is, you know, to reach and impact as many people as we can on this earth, you know, and that's every demographic, every age, every you race. You just getting and, started. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what's next? What now? Um, every I just take it day by day, kind of, with also the big picture in mind, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so my day by day is uh, spreading love, which is a way that the favorite piece and blessings is kind of my way to do that. Um, positivity, giving something good back to the world in the midst of a lot of chaos, my longevity. Um, or to say what I have coming up next as far as projects is, uh, like you said, the movie that comes out August 4th. It's in theaters everywhere. It's about the <laughs> Detroit riots in 1967. Mm-hmm. Um, it's directed by Catherine Bigelow, the first female to ever win an Oscar. It has, it has uh, Jason Mitchell, they play Easy e and Straight Outta Compton, John Krasinski from The Office. Uh, there's so many people in here. Anthony Mackie, um, John Boyega from Star Wars. Mm-hmm. It's a good cast, great um, emotional feeling, and it's based on a true story. Back in the day, a uh, group by the name of Dramatics, so it follows their life. I'm giving so much information that I'm not supposed to be giving. But I also have an EP coming out next month, That's so right. look out for that. EP I don't know when fire. this comes out, but the EP will be out in April, so if this comes out later, yeah. then go back. And get the EP. Yeah. And this ain't all talk. This ain't all talk. <laughs> this ain't all talk. Yeah. I'm crying. She's crying. <laughs> <laughs> She's crying. It's okay. I don't know about eyes getting away. Oh, I thought you was crying for real. Like, Dang, she got touched. <laughs> <laughs> the EP? The EP. Okay. It's that good. Bring tears. Thank you for tuning in to Not All Talk. It has definitely been a pleasure to have Algie Smith and John Ely today. And we are just excited about what they have coming up. So if you have not yet watched New Edition, please go watch it over and over and over again. And... Follow John Ely and Algie Smith just to see what they have. They have some amazing things in store for us. Thank you for tuning in to Not All Talk. Peace. (laughs) Thank you, guys.